you know, I've had two losses in, in my life. And both losses, you know, I felt happened for a reason. And without these losses, I don't think I could have ever been as great as I am today. Because it really uh, put me in a place where I had to say to myself, do I want to, do, can, I, can I do it again? Do I really want it? Am I a true champion? And that's what I wanted to prove to everybody, that I was a true champion and I could do it again. Losing is a big trial and tribulation. A lot, a lot of us can't really come back and fight back from a loss. Now, Lewis unbeaten after 25 I threw a right hand and uh, McCall threw a right hand and his right hand got through first. That's the punches that get you in trouble, the punch you don't see. And I went down and the referee counted really fast and uh, you know, I'm heavyweight champion in the world, the referee counts you out. I'm up on my feet, ready to go, he counts you out. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, it's not like I got beat up for five rounds or six rounds. You know, it was a great shot, I got up from it, let me go on, but it wasn't that situation. So I, f I felt that a loss really helped me. I think I learned a great deal. It really helped me because if I would've went through that fight, and, and beat Oliver McCall. I think, you know, I may have gone down another bad road somewhere. So in a, in a sense, this was like a teaching process for me, making the right decisions and, and you know, correcting the the, uh, the world around Lennox Lewis. Lennox actually turned to us and said, why are you all sad? Everybody was like really gloomy and sad. I said, it's just a fight, you know. Boxing, you never know when you're gonna lose, but you, you have to accept the winning and the losing. I think there was one major thing that you said after the fight which really stuck in my mind was you guys got to realise that you know I knew this this could happen one day when I was first started boxing we never really you know we just look as you know Lennox unbeatable it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulder you know a burden you know all of a sudden okay I slipped you know I'm not I'm not, I'm not perfect you never know what happens in life the only best thing you can do is basically make sure that you do your best. You know, we can always look back and say, well, at least we did it correctly. And, you know, we did it as a team and there was trust and brotherhood and everything else that goes along with it. There'd be losses in life in the sense that, oh, you lose a job or, or you lost your paycheck or something happens negatively in, in your life that you have to be able to come back from. So. For, for me, you know, when I lost the first time, I knew my mistake straight away. At that time, my body was way in front of me, of, uh, of my, of the, uh, of myself, of my middle of myself, and my balance was way ahead of myself, and uh, he just caught me right on the bottom. It's like I helped him to knock me, me down. And I knew that that wouldn't happen to me again. Uh, it did happen to me again, but it was a different mistake. And I knew that mistake wouldn't happen to me again, but it was... Being able to come back from it, you know, I had people saying, oh, uh, so what are you going to do with the rest of your career? I'm like, what are you talking about, rest of my career? Muhammad Ali, great hero of mine, he lost three times, he came back three times. Andy Stewart was the trainer for Oliver McCall back in 1994. Now he's in the corner of Lennox Lewis. All oh, while I've been training uh, the other heavyweights that I've had, uh, Michael Moore and Evander Holyfield, I always... You know, let it be known to everyone that my favorite heavyweight in the world was always Lennox Lewis. And in fact, they used to even tease me about it, uh, and Oliver McCall included. I had to leave that Lennox would win the championship again, and it would be a chance for me to go on and really to take one major project and see if I can make him become the best Oliver and heavyweight in the history of boxing. All of a sudden, reaching and, and getting with Emmanuel Stewart, it seemed like we were made for each other because he had such a knowledge of the game, such experience out there, and he was one of the, he's, he's a trainer that he would speak, and all of a sudden, I would listen and I could understand and actually do what he would want, or what he, what he was telling me to do. Communication in the corner between a boxer and his trainer is often the difference between winning and losing in close fights. But finding the right chemistry is no exact science. For Lennox Lewis and Emmanuel Stewart, their connection is a work in rapid progress. It's like when you walk into a place and you meet somebody and you start speaking to that person, but it's like you've known this person all your life. That's the chemistry between me and Emmanuel Stewart. I believe that the chemistry between Lennox and I 
it's going to make a big difference, and that's something that's it's so important. But how has that chemistry developed? Why have Lennox Lewis and Emmanuel Stewart responded to each other? I felt that he needed a real good, strong person that he could respect because he's a strong-minded individual himself. And it, a normal, weak person uh, would not be able to handle Lennox Stone because he's very, very strong-minded, very opinionated. That if he respects someone else, it makes a big difference. The former heavyweight champion's respect for his new trainer was evident a year ago when first they began working together. Stewart, who had been at Oliver McCall's corner the night Lewis lost his title to McCall, didn't wait to begin criticizing his new pupil. At that stage, you know, he was a very still emotionally not completely stable person. You know, his last fight he had lost. He's too conservative and too intelligent and too analytical in the ring. It's like a chess game in a sense, and uh, it's a game where you have to use your strategy. And in some situations, he would become more aggressive, and then on another night, the real true Lennox would dominate, and he would become more conservative, even in situations when it's not even necessary. And that is what has stopped him from becoming the fighter that he is capable of being. I think one of his biggest weakness was his balance and uh, his uh, stiffness and he said i agree and I, you know that's what can we do to change it so that was that was one of the first things that really impressed me about his willingness to to learn and to change and accept uh, his weak points that i think that was the biggest factor he and i are really i would say mentally on the same wavelength as far as things in boxing like that i see something that's wrong or whatever I usually will stop in this room and he'll say right away, he'll say, I know what you're going to talk about because it's been bothering me too. Especially when Emmanuel's not there and I'm working out by myself, I still visualize him training me and some of the things that he would say I needed to be, do be doing. Mentally, I would look at myself from a third, from the outside and see what I'm doing wrong. Lewis to this day and many around him feel that it was just too quick of a stoppage. Lewis in control here in round two. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Joe Lewis, as you know, he was knocked out by Max Esmani, the German champion, in the 12th round. In the return fight, he knocked out Esmani. So Schmeling, what he saw was that Lewis would jab and he would leave. You should never leave your head on the, on the right side. Lewis went on, he won the world title. Joe, the champion was not yet, not yet. What do you mean not yet? Just won the title, not yet. That's why I beat that man. Schmeling tried to catch him with that same right hand he had knocked him out two years earlier. Go back. Hey, he just missed it. But he changed. He stepped out. He changed his distance this time. Instead of laying his head on the right like he did the first fight, he changed his range. And he made that right hand miss. The right hand opened Ruckman's left eye. And he's bleeding above the left eye now. You don't want him to let Lennox Lewis get his rhythm with his jam. And you suppose Lennox Lewis is alert and aware enough to note that Rockman is dry. Hard right hand by Lewis. Halfway through the round, Rockman has yet to throw. I think the right hand opened Rockman's left eye. This is indeed a very aggressive jabbing performance by Lewis. Rockman is starting to get him to go on the ropes now. Lewis is doing a good job. He seems for the moment, George, who to have nullified Rockman's right hand. I think Lennox Lewis is one of the, one of the greatest heavyweights to ever live. I mean, his record is awesome. You know, uh, I think, I, I mean, I put him in against anybody at any time. His punch is always going to land the first punch. Yeah, but one thing that lives in Lennox Lewis here, that night in Africa. Yep. You can't take that away from him. Keep your hands up. They're telling him not to counterpunch. Oh! 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 Oh!
captured his revenge. He says, no, not sure. Say with favor, Ali, chew me float like a butterfly. We sting like a bee. We lick down any boy that step in front of me. We no care if in red, white, black, or coolie. With a left right, I cut the open to me and let him cry out. God help me. If my Tyson say him, I fight me. If I do my fear, say him, I fight me. I'll be looked at as a person that's basically done it with dignity, honor, did it myself, did it my way, and got out at the right time. You know, somebody that's went through trials and tribulation and with everything against him was able to be successful. Now he can relax him. Deserves it too. Not too many guys wanted to fight him. Not too many guys were stepping up and saying, well, let me have a shot at Lennox Lewis. And here's the reason why. Yeah, because they knew the talent that Lennox possessed. Here go. Hold on. Lennox Lewis looks like he's not only beating down Galata, he's beating down everybody who ever doubted him in the ring. He says he's the best fighter in the world. He gets the opinion he's the best heavyweight that ever walked the planet. Well, he, he goes to prove, to prove that right here. The main man, the lion, Lennox Lewis. Thank you.